If someone else should be using your machine and they want to use their workspace, it doesn't affect you so that when you come back, you can choose your workspace to work the way you like. And if at any point you want to add a panel to your workspace, you can do that. Let's say as you're working in the program, you say, you know what? I use my links panel quite a bit. So if I show that panel, I could choose to dock it in my workspace. So now, instead of just the I down to the character panel, I now have one for links. Hello, creative. It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. In Illustrator, you have complete control over how the program looks, down to the interface color, to whether your toolbar on the left-hand side is in a single column or double column, and the panels you choose to show in your workspace toolbar. If you come to the upper right-hand corner next to the search box in Adobe Illustrator's interface, you'll see that you'll have predefined workspaces, such as Essentials. So if I go ahead and show the painting interface, these are the panels that you're most likely going to need. Colors, make sense, right? Brushes. Or if we come to Essentials, Essentials such as Color, Swatches, Stroke. So how you choose to organize your workspace absolutely affects how efficiently you work. And if you can work more efficiently, then you have more time for creativity. And the more time you have for ideation, the less time you need for routine production. So I highly encourage you not to use the built-in workspaces that Adobe provides. While they make sense, you know, topography layout has the character panel up. Over time, you'll know the panels that you tend to use more often than not. So really only you can best define the panels in your workspace that you should show. So with that, I'm going to share with you my setup for my Graphics Girl workspace. These are the panels that I suggest, but just a note, these are the panels that I tend to use more often than not, and they're just a suggestion. You don't have to mirror your workspace based on mine. In fact, I would say start with my workspace and then tailor it as you use and get more comfortable in the program. So to begin with, at the top of my workspace, I show my info panel. You can show your info panel by coming to window, info. The info panel shows you the X and Y coordinates of whatever you have selected, as well as the width and the height. It also has other attributes such as the color. In this example, you can see this file was set in the, in the RGB color mode. It happens to also list the hexadecimal value of this color. So the info palette is important for getting information on whatever you've selected. Here if I've selected this question mark, this is where it's located on the artboard, and these are its dimensions in pixels. Next, I like to show the character panel. When you click on the character panel, you'll see that it shows the font, font family, point size, letting, kerning, tracking. It shows you all of the important information regarding type you've set. So see my tutorial regarding typesetting to get more information on the actual panel, but I think the character panel is essential, much as is the paragraph panel. For that reason, I have these two bundled. So to show the character panel, you come to Window, Type, Character. So all of these are docked. When you're showing a panel that you might not have already docked, it will look as though it's free floating, or perhaps it will already be docked in a workspace that you have shown. So to undock a panel, you just click on that tab at the top and pull out. You just click on the vent at the top and drag out. I can expand the panel by clicking the double arrows at the top. 
See, so your panel might look like this when you show it from the window menu. It might be free floating. For now, we can go ahead and just leave this out because we're gonna go ahead and show our paragraph panel. To show the paragraph panel, again, you come to type paragraph. I had it docked, let's imagine that it was not docked and it's free floating. So when I clicked on the character panel initially for my Graphics Girl workspace, you might have noticed that paragraphs seem to be tiered with my character panel. So you can dock panels within themselves as well as within the dock. So here I'm going to combine character with paragraph because these two go hand in hand. If I'm setting type with my character panel, most likely I might need to set the paragraph alignment. So with these two docked together, I'm going to grab it by its title bar at the top here and push it into my workspace toolbar. You'll see that you'll get a highlight of blue. That shows you where its positioning is in the workspace itself. If I want it at the top, I'll just let go. Next, let's show our color swatches. You can show the swatches by coming to Window, Swatches. I like this one on its own workspace. You'll see here that while the swatches and the color and the gradient are all kind of related to one another, I do like to keep them in their own segment so that when I pull one drawer out, such as swatches, I could keep the color separate. It makes perfect sense to me if you should want to show your color by coming to Window, Color, and dock it within the swatches, meaning you could have your color panel out and you push it into the same grouping as your swatches so that when you click on swatches, why, there's the color. This makes sense if you'd like to dock these two. The reason why I don't and why I keep them separate is because sometimes I like to mix a color and then drag the chip from my color panel into my swatches. And I, I find that more difficult when they're docked together. So with that, I'm going to keep color on its own. Next, gradient. So the gradient panel is really helpful in combination with the gradient tool. And to learn more about the gradients, you should check out my mega tutorial, the Graphics Girl's Guide to Gradients, to learn more about that panel. Next, I like to have my stroke. So you can show your stroke panel by coming to Window, Stroke. And when you're showing any one of these panels, in the upper right hand corner, the little hamburger or options menu allows you to show or hide options. You want to always show options. It's nice to have options. And with that, it will make your panel longer. But here with the options, you have the ability to set parameters for a dashed line, such as you see in this graphic. Next, I love the align panel. I couldn't live without this panel. You come to Window, Align. This allows you to align up objects to itself as well as to the artboard. You should check out my tutorial on aligning objects. Next, Transform. You show your Transform panel by coming to Window, Transform. The Transform panel shows you the location and dimensions of the object as well as the skew amount and degree of rotation but I love it for the options menu because I use this, flip horizontal and flip vertical all the time. Next, I show the Pathfinder panel. You can show your Pathfinder panel once again by coming to Window, Pathfinder. So you're getting the sense that for any one of these panels that you show in your workspace, that you can get to it by coming to the Window menu at the top of the Illustrator interface, in the current version of Illustrator, only the type panels have sub panels. So the Pathfinder panel is essential for creating complex shapes. Next, transparency. You might decide that if you want to lower the opacity that perhaps transparency might be closer related to the swatches or the colors. So you could pull that out and dock it wherever you like. You can see wherever the blue highlight is is where it will appear. 
Lastly, I have my layers panel. If I have a lot of layers going on and a small monitor, sometimes I'll pull out my layers panel, expand it, and put it to the side so that I have the room to have all of my layers showing. You can resize any one of these panels at the bottom. So now that you're showing the panels and have them in the order that you'd like, you can save this workspace. You can come back to it time and time again. To save a custom workspace in Illustrator, you come to the Workspaces drop-down at the top and you choose New Workspace. With that, you'll have the New Workspace dialog box and you can give it a name. When you click OK, now at the top, your workspace name will indicate what you've named it as. So you'll have your predefined workspaces as well as the one that you've created. If someone else should be using your machine and they want to use their workspace, it doesn't affect you so that when you come back, you can choose your workspace to work the way you like. And if at any point you want to add a panel to your workspace, you can do that. Let's say as you're working in the program, you say, you know what? I use my links panel quite a bit. So if I show that panel, I could choose to dock it in my workspace. So now instead of just the I, down to the character panel, I now have one for links. So if I wanted to update my workspace with this panel, I would just come back to the workspace drop down at the top and choose once again, new workspace. When you choose new workspace, use the same name for this workspace. It says the name already exists. Clicking OK will overwrite. So in essence, you're blowing away your old workspace with this new updated workspace. So now if you were to choose a different workspace and then come back to the one that you created, why it's updated with your latest panel. If ever you'd like to delete extraneous workspaces that you've created, you would come to manage workspace at the bottom. And with that, you could select which workspace you'd like to delete. It's gonna flag you, are you sure? Yes. Yes, I am. So now I don't have Graphics Girl as one of my options. So lastly, I generally don't have my toolbars hanging all the way out here and you know, wasting all this dead space. I pull them in so that when I use my highlight and zoom in on it, I'm not getting cut off. It's all the way at the end of my screen. So lastly, I'm going to show you that when I do my tutorials for you, I come to view and I tend to hide my artboard. And when I do that, you no longer can see the artboard from the scratch pad. This usually has a white background, so it looks like I have a lot of room. But when I work normally, I show my artboard so I can see the edge of my document as well as my scratch pad. I can zoom in and zoom out. And lastly, I move my toolbars to the edge so that I maximize my screen real estate. So there are the recommended panels that I use in my Graphics Girl workspace. You can use others. In fact, tell me in the comments which panels you tend to use and have docked in your workspace and why. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. Okay. That's graphics with P-H and S. Mm. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.